uh, Met USA Admission Director Gloria Steele and uh, Colonel Peck from the 3rd uh, Marine Expeditionary Brigade. Um, on November 8th, of course, uh, uh, Typhoon Yolanda uh, crushed southeast part of Samar and, and Leyte. And, uh, and that, that tragedy now has, uh, has become a focal point for the world. And of course, the United States is uh, working and doing its best to facilitate and support the government of the Philippines and the people of the Philippines with our relief and assistance efforts. And so the typhoon hit on the 8th. On the 9th, we declared a, a disaster working with the government of the Philippines. Uh, we issued $100,000 of fast acting aid at that time. Uh, in subsequent days, we then uh, provided $20 million worth of assistance. Uh, I think, as you know, we began providing military uh, equipment on the 9th, beginning with C-130s and MV-22 Osprey aircraft. We now have 10 of the C-130s and 8 of the MV-22s uh, available in, uh, in country providing relief. Um, so what we've done is we've been moving food, water, uh, hygiene supplies, uh, shelters uh, to the um, to the affected area, uh, working in very close co coordination with the government of the Philippines, DSWD, AFP, and others. Um, in the meantime, we've had the Marine Third Marine Expeditionary Brigade move 400 of its forces uh, down to support this operation, uh, operating primarily out of Manila and Tacloban to to form the air bridge. Uh, in the last uh, you know, over the recent times. We've moved uh, 174,000 kilos altogether of relief supplies. Uh, and I think we've flown something like 186 flights, 186 sorties of those aircraft in support of providing those relief supplies to the, to the people of the Philippines. Clearly, we're working shoulder and shoulder with the Philippine government, with the Philippine people, trying to work our way through the suffering. Um, this reflects our dedication uh, to a good friend and a good ally in the Philippines. And uh, we're doing our best to coordinate and support each other as we go forward in this process. Um, I'm also pleased to say that the American, the American population, uh, the civilian side, is also stepping up to the plate. We've seen great donations coming in from all different kinds of American organizations, NGOs, churches, etc., as well as Philams, of course, Filipino Americans, uh, also joining the operation and the effort to try to provide support and assistance. Um, we're working, of course, with the United Nations organizations and other international organizations to coordinate and facilitate um, these movements. And so, for example, um, to date, we moved 1,176 1, people into Tacloban to help with the, the relief efforts. Uh, in terms of bringing people out, transporting people out, we've moved uh, 2,773 Filipinos, 109 Americans, and 86 uh, nationals from other countries as part of this uh, relief effort. Um, so with, uh, with those opening remarks, I'd like to turn the mic over to um, yes, Undersecretary Bettino. We'll take questions in a moment. Uh, on the part of the Department of National Defense, on behalf of Secretary Voltaire T. Gasmin, on the part of uh, the Armed Forces of the Philippines, we'd want to express our great appreciation to the uh, very valuable assistance and support coming from the U.S. government, the Department of Defense, the U.S. Pacific Command. Uh, we have seen uh, how our cooperation has translated into great service to our countrymen and uh, we hope for a continued uh, cooperation in the uh, field of humanitarian assistance and disaster relief. Uh, again, we would uh, express our great appreciation and thanks to the uh, U.S. government, uh, especially to the Defense Department and the, to the U.S. US Pacific Command. Okay. Yeah, Seamlessly, and we're, we have reached or reaching that point where the combination of heavy airlift and the uh, light to medium airlift is such that we're able to move the necessary uh, relief supplies as quickly as possible. We. Uh, as we continue to mourn our loss uh, in the face of nature's wrath, we commit ourselves to continue to bring uh, all the necessary re uh, relief to our people. We will tap every resource. We will uh, call on every alliance to do so. Thank you.
Thank you very much, King. Uh, Gloria, would you like to make any remarks? Gloria. Yeah. Let's just take questions now. Okay. So I guess we're, we have time for two or three questions, yeah. perhaps. How have you seen any improvement in the Sorry, aid delivery? Sorry, lady here. Sorry. Oh, I think. Uh, yes, uh, there's a very significant uh, a change in the... Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, could, if we could please, I've identified this, you know, this young lady here. Yes, um, the greatest concern is that aid is not getting people to the far-flung areas. Can you talk about how some of the U.S. assets are working to get that, the aid to those parts without having to worry about the lack of fuel, without having to worry about the not clear roads that we keep hearing about? Well, thank you very much for the question. I think uh, I can make some initial comments that Gloria may make oh, some and uh, Colonel Peck may want to add. I think the, the key point here is the large volume of assistance went through, was pushed through to Tacloban. Now what's happening is the MV-22, the Ospreys, together with the helicopters from the uh, George Washington uh, Carrier Strike Group, together with the Philippine AFP's own helicopters, all of those assets are now moving uh, resources from the um, from Tacloban out to multiple points, I think 16 or 18 different drop points yesterday and the same number today. So if you think of it as a hub and spoke arrangement, those are being pushed out and then from those endpoints, even more is being pushed out from there. So uh, I think we can say that there's good distribution now happening through many areas that may have not seen distribution uh, before. Um, Gloria, would you like to add something? Uh, yes, and in addition to that, uh, we have um, we have been working with some NGOs that have a local presence, and they were there pre-positioned pre to provide assistance at the community level. So local, it's the local NGOs who are knowing how to get around because the international community is very. Um, yesterday, as you know, the UN uh, Under Secretary General had said that it's been difficult for me to get in, and I think it is the international. Well, these are international NGOs that are staffed with local staff. They plan international, and that's right. And th that's who we work with anyway. Um, the, even, even, even the international NGOs use Filipino staff. You know they're very good, so they know their way around and can assume a lot of the, of the difficulties and the challenges of the places. Yeah, could I also recognize Colonel Peck from 3rd Marine Expeditionary Brigade? Colonel, why don't you step through here, please? Uh, yes, we're continuing right now to work with our uh, partners at uh, U.S. Uh, AID and our, our Filipino uh, Armed Forces counterparts as well to uh, build up our logistics heads at uh, Tacloban and uh, Guion. From there, we're uh, we're having we're uh, building refueling points and we're uh, generating water. And now we're starting to branch out into those hardest hit, isolated areas along the coast of uh, Samar, Eastern Samar, Southern Samar, and uh, Leyte. Uh, we're going to continue working hard with our uh, armed forces of the Philippine counterparts. We're going to build our forces. We're, we're coordinating and uh, organizing every day. And uh, we're just going to keep moving until we help as many people as we can. Thank you. Second, you second question. Sir, sir. Yes, um, let's do ABS again because I see their microphone. Peel. Of course, Peel. Yes, let's come on through. Yes. Got a question? Can I ask a question, sir? Uh, ABS. Yes. Okay, let's go with the inquiry. Yes, 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 Tara, yes. go ahead. Have you seen any improvements during the delivery of aid? Now we're entering into the first week of this, these operations. Oh, uh, very, very much so. I think if you look at the at the volume that I just talked about, um, that's an immense amount of uh, throughput. And it's not just the U.S. government. Of course, the Philippine government C-130s are flying really full full capacity all the time from what we can see. Mm -hmm. So really making the best use of the Philippines' own assets. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, of course, there's the international community. A, a dozen or more other nations have also been conducting flights and, and are now making their air assets available to the United Nations to continue. So the volume is, is pretty immense. And as you can see over here, you can see boxes of uh, relief supplies from USAID, um, tarpaulins, uh, shelters, uh, hygiene kits, things like that. So we're seeing a, a much broader range and a larger volume. And then, but the good news is it's moving out of Tacloban and, and out to these small areas that uh, Colonel Peck and uh, that Gloria referred to. So the United the Nations has expressed frustration in delivering these items uh, recently. Do you feel or do you share the same sentiments? Um, I mean, uh, my sense is we've been able to move what we need to move, and so uh, you know that's the that's the good news story. I think is that 
if you ask people down there, they're seeing a flow, a flow of goods, and that's what's important. And not, again, not just to Tacloban, but out to, you know, a couple dozen outlying far distant areas that, that might not other, otherwise have gotten assistance. So you, you don't share the sentiment? Do you see increase the 20 million that uh, has already been set aside and the logistics cost support? Is, uh, will the, is, is there more aid coming from the U.S.? And uh, what are the additional requirements that you will need now that you've seen how it is on the ground? Gloria, you want to? Where's Gloria? I lost her here. Okay, I don't want to. The, the, our commitment is to provide support as long as support is needed. And uh, there continues to be need for food and non food items, and we will uh, stand by, work with the Philippine so government, no uh, work with the Philippine government, and continue to assess the needs. All right, so there's no additional funding at this point on top of the 20 million. And additional requests for other stuff that I have not, that are not yet here. We're looking at how the, how the relief goods are going right now, and we're assessing that. And we will continue to monitor the need. Thank you very much. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Thank you for coming out. Thank you for coming out and breaking the sun. Sir, are there a round of talks on basic access? We're not talking about that. Ito yung ay ang press briefing ng U.S. Embassy kaugnay sa pagtulong ng gobyerno ng Amerika sa mga biktima ng Super Typhoon Yolanda sa pangunguna ni Charge the Affairs Brian Goldbeck. Ginagawa raw ng Amerika ang lahat para matulungan ang Pilipinas na malapit, malapit nitong kaalyado. Mula nang lumapag sa Tacloban City, ang tulong na dala ng Amerika na ipapamahagi na raw ang, ito, ang mga ito sa mga lugar sa labas ng lungsod. Target daw nila ang malalayang lugar sa Visayas na hindi pa nahatiran ng tulong. Aabot daw yan sa $20 million na tulong.